In this video, we're going to cover the wrapped DAX function in Power BI. We're going to look at what it is, how to use it, and some scenarios on how you can use it in Power BI and in Excel. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the rept DAX function is actually a fairly simple DAX function. So you give it a text and you tell it how often it needs to repeat it, and it will just return that whole string of text for you. So this is the documentation for the rept DAX function. So as I mentioned to you, it just simply repeats the number or the the text that you give it based on the number of instances that you you tell it in the parameters here. So it takes the two values that we mentioned. And there are a few remarks here, like if the number of times is zero, it just returns blank. If it's not an integer in the number of times, the value is truncated. And there is a limit to the number of characters that it returns, which is 32,000 characters here. So if you are using or having to repeat characters up to that limit, just be aware that you are going to hit some errors if you're using this function. So let's have a look at just a quick example of how you might be able to or first let's have a look at how how it works right so let's uh, let's start by creating a measure I repeat and we're gonna just use wrapped here so let's say you want me you want to just say this and then we want to repeat this three times if you put it in a let's say a card here, as you can see, it just repeats that text that you've given it three times. And obviously, as you change the number of times, it changes the number of repetition that you can have. So that's pretty simple. There wasn't really a lot of explanation on how it works because it's super simple. So now let's have a look at some different ways that you can use rept, uh, at least in a real life scenario. So the first and the most easiest one that I have done in the past is by creating a sort of average or star ratings, which involves five stars. Uh, let's say if you have a three star rating out of five, you would have three filled stars out of the five all stars. So you have three filled stars and two not filled stars. And um, one way that you can have or create this visual is by combining it with a few other functions, but mainly using using the reps DAX function. So this is the data set that we're looking at today, which is a list of different movie titles. And we have some different information here, like the total number of votes, what their ranks are, and their average rating. But what we're going to focus on is the average rating part, which is um, a decimal point average based on certain scores. And what we want to do is to convert this into a five star rating. And to do that, we're going to use uh, measure or DAX functions to, to convert this and change this into stars instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a measure here. So I'm just going to reuse this one. We're just going to rename this into star rating. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to convert the average rating into five scale. So it's apparently or currently it's the average rating is between one to ten, but we want to change that to one to five. So we're going to change average movie rating. And uh, well, actually, let's have a look and see what this gives us. So it gives us the exact same value. And then we're simply going to just divide this into two. So the safe way to divide as usual is by using the divide x function. So now it gives us or we kind of round it up to a five digit rating, but we don't want the, the decimals as well, because we want to count the stars instead of, you know, without any decimals, because we want the full star for each point. So we're going to wrap this with an integer with an int function. And that just forces and rounds those numbers up into single digits number rating. So at the moment, we're looking at Spider-Man, but we can remove that filter. So we just see everything. So you can see now they are converted into three, four, five star ratings. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this in a variable because we're going to have to calculate and reference it later. So instead of rewriting it, we're going to just use a variable. I'm going to name it stars. 
And um, we're going to create another variable called blank, which is going to be basically the blank stars that we're going to fill in with the rest of the five star rating. So we're going to simply do five minus stars, which will give us the remaining number of stars that we need in that. And then now we're going to just choose a return. And we're simply going to combine and repeat the numbers uh, based on the kind of repetition that we have created in the first two variables. So the first thing is we're going to use wrapped and we're going to give this text. So for now, let's give it an X and let's say use the stars. And then we're going to use the ampersand to basically concatenate them. And we're going to use Y and then blank. So now what it's done is, uh, as you can see, there's uh, for every three star rating, you will see that there's three X and then two Y. So that will just give us, you know, the number or the ratings. And at the moment we're using text, but we're going to replace that with a unit chart soon so that you can see it a little bit easier. But basically the X refers to the stars, the filled in stars and the Ys are the kind of the, the outline stars, which is typically how you'd represent the five star rating. So the rep basically chooses the number of stars and then the second rep just chooses the number of uh, the outline stars. So, OK, I'm waffling on now, but uh, let's go and change these into actual stars. So to do that, there are two options for you. So the first thing is you can use the uh, emoji board, which is in access using the Windows dots from your keyboard. It will bring up this selection here so you can choose from emojis or from symbols if you can find it and if you know where they are. However, if you don't know where they are and you know the unichar codes of those those emojis, you can use the function unichar as well to represent them. So I know the codes um, because I have used them before. So if you wrap it with a unichar and the value is 9733, if you hit that enter, you will see that's now the star, the filled in star, and uh, we'll replace this one also with a unit charm, 9734. I believe that's the one. And there you go. So as you can see that for each of these titles, you have five star ratings. The filled in value of stars is based on a you know average that we have changed into kind of five stars or, or five ratings. And it gives you a, an average across all of the different titles that you have selected here. So you might want to select just the, the Spider-Man movies and it will give you the five star rating across all of those different movies. And you can have that as your own visual by itself in a card or something. So the next scenario that I found is actually a bit random, but it's super simple that I thought I'd try to cover it. And it's actually in Excel. And it's a way for you to use reps to show bars fairly easily without using any kind of pivot tables or anything like this in your data tables. So we're going to do this. We're going to go to my Excel file here which is basically just the list of our titles and the number of reviews for each of those titles. I just created just a list, a random list of reviews here that we can kind of use to represent some, some values to, to show. And, um, you know, the values by itself, they are useful. However, you might want to represent this in a bar chart or you want to show them in something that is a little bit more, you know, that makes it a little bit more obvious which reviews have the highest volume for each of the titles. So this is where you can use the wrapped trick. So what we're going to do is we're going to use wrapped. We're going to say use the pipe. So we're going to use this one, comma, and then the number of times is based on the reviews that we have here in this table. So we close this and here we go. So it gives you a kind of a horizontal bar chart to show you the volume of reviews for each of these titles. Now, if you want to make it look a little bit more like a bar chart, you can change the type of font that you're using here. So in this case, for example, the, the one that we can use is something called stencil, which where is this? 
So here we go. So if you change it to stencil, it just makes those characters um, a little bit closer to each other. And it gives you this sort of bar chart look and feel without actually creating any of those visuals in Excel. So fairly simple. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to use the wrapped DAX function in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. You had a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.